Good to greet you in the name of the Lord. Glad we can fellowship one with another and express our praise and worship uh, to our God. Our worship today. Let's turn to number 94 and we'll read together this passage of scripture taken from Ephesians. Let's read it together, please. God's power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. today for our message. It's a, another one of David's beautiful expressions of faith, even in the midst of difficult times. This year, our congregation has faced some hard choices, especially in the area of our health. Suffering comes. It is real. And one is never prepared for the end results. I was, can't help but think about the family whose 17 year old died yesterday. That's real. Train accidents are real. And life is often taken. And at such times, there's all kinds of questions, all kinds of concerns, all kinds of issues that come to our minds. We sometimes wonder all about life at such a moment. We discover that it's often hard to get up and go, get out of bed and just get going. And then through sometimes time and counsel, prayer, worship, 
we come to grips with what's going on and decide that we're in the everlasting arms of a Heavenly Father. Psalm 138 is a difficult moment in the life of David. And yet listen so, listen intently to his words. How, note how he begins. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. He teaches us, I'll probably reiterate it again, but you and I have many gods before us that demand a tremendous amount of our attention, sometimes to the point we even neglect the worship of our God. Everything from our own personal interests to family interests to just what is available in a society like ours demands our attention. Do we praise the Lord with all our heart when we're before the gods? Do we take our stand? I think there's a... This is a time in the history of our country and maybe in our world when Christians here at home in the USA are going to have to take some very strong stands. I will bow down before your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon me the works of your hands. When singing with the Watchman Quartet, I was always pleased when one of us would choose, we'd choose four or five of our songs to sing every evening <clears throat> or morning. And I was always pleased when they would pick sheltered in the arms of God, or I had that opportunity. I used it this week on an encouraging word. That song means more to me today than it did when we first learned it. And as the years pass by, to be sheltered in the arms of God It's still a very touching thought. It reassures me that this distant God is also nearby. And in this hour of COVID and all the, the issues that it presents because of its presence, it's important that you know he hears you and he loves you. And Psalm 138 is a text I hope you'll come to read more often because it will help you worship God in your time of difficulty. 
Worship is a place we need to be. And I pray to God there will soon become a time when many of our loved ones and friends will be able to join us together in praise in this place. Worship seems to lift us up. And David teaches us something here that you and I need to do. In his life, don't forget the forces of evil, his own son, the followers of his son, all were seeking to destroy him because the son wanted to be the king. And his life, David's life was at stake. And to live wondering who is behind you or before you, you and I have been there. We know what that's like. I love this text. I will praise you. <clears throat> David uses the personal pronouns of you and your ten times in the very first stanza of this psalm. He was so grateful for the majesty and for the presence of the living God in his life. And to praise God was, from his perspective, something that I need to do. I need to offer thanks. It's hard to say thank you when you're laying in a hospital bed or when death comes suddenly into your life experience, or when you lose a job. Can you imagine the thousands of men and women in Montana and Dakota right now who this week don't have jobs? These are our fellow citizens. These are people who are in going to be in desperate need. We must be aware as Christians to grow in our praise with thanksgiving. I'm not sure it's very easy today to sit as a household in North Dakota and at dinner time say thank you for what I'm experiencing. But we are to grow so much in our life of faith that we can be better people by offering our thanksgiving to God even in the midst of adversity. To praise God is to offer Him thanks. We often will hear one of us say, come before His presence with thanksgiving. That comes to us from Psalm 95 or Psalm 100. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his holy name. Gratitude is a key. I know in my prayer life, I've come to him like a dump truck. And I have to watch that. Yes, I'm to cast my burdens upon him because he cares for me. That's what his text says. But I don't need to dump it all at the front door. I need to be careful. We must learn to come into his courts with thanksgiving, even in times of crisis. But not only should we worship him thankfully, worship him wholeheartedly. David brought his heart, he brought his soul, he brought his mind together and praise God. What are you pursuing as a Christian in your life that claims your all? What is it that's driving you and demanding so much from you? God would answer that question, I gave my all for you. God became one of us. 
And then he gave his life out of love for us. He gave himself wholeheartedly for us and allows us to enter into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. I read it a couple, three times this week. I would encourage you to read it in its entirety. You'll find the words wholehearted and the words with a whole heart again and again. I'll just give you some examples. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Give me understanding and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. When approaching God in our worship, we should come before him with an undivided heart. How do we approach our Sunday gatherings in worship? How do you approach him when you're lying on a bed and can't move very easily? How do you approach him when you are being blessed and there's just joy in your soul? Sometimes I have sensed in my life, I don't know if it's true in yours, but that I'm more in tune with him when I'm going through the difficult times. It's then he gets our full attention. When I had my bypass surgery and I didn't know what all that meant, and I'm lying there and the kids are nearby and Pat is nearby, you become very aware that this may be a goodbye. And quietly you pray. And verbally you, tie, you find it hard to pray out loud. The tears are just too close and they come easily. As I read to you the Psalm 138 again, it says, before the gods, before all the evil that's around our world, I will praise you. These were the pagan deities. These were the influential cities and nations surrounding Judah. It isn't just David's world that has false gods. Ours does too. And he says, David writes, I'll serve the Lord even in the midst of the gods of my world. He didn't care what other people thought. He was God's servant, God's follower. And I encourage you to be more vocal in your faith, in the presence of gods that will be demanding our attention this year. Christians are under pressure. There's more hostility to our biblical values and teachings. And we need to stand up for biblical truths and biblical values. A friend of mine called me this week from Lincoln. He and I are quite far apart when it comes to church. He's very active in his, and I think I'm active in mine. But we agreed in our shared moment that this is a time when Christians have got to come together and speak a good word for the Lord because we are under pressure. God praised God courageously, or David praised God courageously. 
He did it with heart. He did it with soul. He did it with mind. And that's a great witness for us. He also worshipped him intelligently. He praised God with mercy and truth. Or he praised, I should say, he praised God for his mercy and truth. The word actually is loving kindness, but in the Hebrew language, that word hesed actually means mercy. Mercy and truth are twins in the Old Testament. Psalm 25, 10 says, All the paths of my Lord are mercy and truth. In Psalm 57, we read, God shall send forth his mercy and truth. Psalm 85 says, Mercy and truth have met together. When you look around, you see people like I do who are often strong on mercy, but weak on truth. Very seldom is mercy and truth in the same person. One will be high on mercy, low on truth, and as a result will practice injustice when it comes to others. They're also not willing to have people face accountability for their actions. And then there are those who are high on truth and low on mercy, and they walk before us as self-righteous, reminding us of the Pharisees of old, whose off-time task was more to injure another person than to forgive. Jesus was such a beautiful embodiment of truth and mercy. Praise him for his word. There are teachings in this book I just have a hard time with, and I don't fully understand. One of these is that God values his integrity, his honesty, so much that he has elevated it higher than the name God. When we study God's word, we can know he'll be with us. And that his word is higher than anything in the universe. And we're living in a world that is compromising that word so much. The word of God carries an authority matching the very name of Jehovah. His word is trustworthy because he is trustworthy and he will always balance his answers to you with mercy and truth. Praise him for his provisions. Think about these words. David writes, In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. God hears us as soon as we cry out. We need to be remembered or reminded. His timetable is not necessarily ours. But I want to reassure you today, he'll be with you when you're in trouble. He'll keep his promise to you for strength and endurance. I'm looking for a day that's yet to come when you and I and the multitudes of the world of different races, backgrounds, will worship together. Can you imagine the sound? We'll be joined together in praise an exaltation of all of his glories for what he has done. I'm with the writer of the song who said, oh, that will be 
glory for me. Together, let us praise the Lord as we conclude our gathering this morning. Sing.